in God's Word about the time of the Lord's return. And that statement is this, and it's clear. When the gospel has been preached into all nations, to all the world, into all the nations, he said, then the end will come. Our conqueror has been conquered in the face of the power of the kingdom of God in Christ. Death was helpless. It could not hold him. Death has been defeated and immortality has been, has brought to light. We have been delivered, set free. Our sins have been forgiven. This is why we should be excited about sharing our story of redemption that was brought by the good news to us by Christ himself when he come into this world. Thank you for joining us today. This is Pastor Russell greeting you here from Global Awakening Fellowship and Institute. My, what a privilege it is to uh, come and be with you and uh, share with you the Word of God as we are talking about the Word of God and the importance of the Word of God in our lives as believers and how that we are to be functioning in this world in which we live. Our world is a world of chaos right now. We, we are experiencing the fulfillment of many prophetic scriptures concerning end times and uh, revival, spiritual awakenings, and just the diverse uh, time in which we live. We see the uh, things of the world running parallel with what God is doing in the earth and uh, the battles between good and evil, uh, the moral uh, failures and decadence of culture and society and political forms of all kinds. And within the midst of that, we could become very discouraged and we could look to the left and the right and not stay focused on the Word of God. But God has called us for such a time as this and we're going to stay focused on the Word of God and we're going to be the people that God has called us to be in this day and we will be His church that He uses for kingdom expansion in these days in which we live. I am so thankful for the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom. The good news. The most important verse in the word of God today for the church is this verse. And I'm going to read it to you and I want you to to hear it because it is a very, very powerful passage of Scripture. And I have never, in all of my 50 years of serving the Lord and teaching and preaching, I have never made this statement until this program and preparing for this program. And the text is this, Matthew 24, 14. And it runs parallel with the Great Commission in Matthew 28. But here in Matthew 24, 14, the writer says this, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. Now, I want you to receive that into your spirit. The gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as witness to all nations and then the end will come. There are lots of voices today about when Christ will return. But this verse is the clearest statement in God's word about the time of our Lord's return. Now I want you to, you, you, you can be a Bible student, 
You can be a prophetic student and uh, you can be an academic student of, of scripture and end times. And, and, and we can have all of our uh, disp dispensational uh, doctrine in, in alignment with, uh, with scripture and all of those kinds of things. And, and, and I think, think that we should, and I think we should study the word of God diligently and, and, and understand the signs of the times as well as the season in which we're living. But here is the clearest statement in God's word about the time of the Lord's return. And that statement is this, and it's clear. When the gospel has been preached into all nations, to all the world, into all the nations, he said, then the end will come. The passage of scripture that is related to in Matthew 28, 19, and 20. These two verses go hand in hand. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. Lo, I am with you always to the end of the age. Amen. Both of these verses speak about the same mission, the evangelization of the world until the end of the age. Let me insert this here. The end has not come yet. The end, we're still here, so the end hasn't come. So our responsibility as believers is to continue the mandate of the Great Commission right where we are. The book of Acts records that the apostles set out upon the fulfillment of this mission. Just think back to the book of Acts at the beginning of the New Testament church and the excitement there on the day of Pentecost at, it, at the founding of the church. My goodness, that was an exciting day. The disciples and the followers of Christ, 120 of them, were, were following the commandment of Jesus. He said, I'm leaving here. I'm going back to my father. But he said, I want you to go to Jerusalem and I want you to tarry there until you're endued with power. And their obligation was to go and tarry until they were endued with power. Why were they to be endued with power? So that they could fulfill the mandate of the Great Commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And what did these apostles do? What did these believers do after the day of Pentecost? They preached the gospel, the good news, to the Jews and to the Gentiles. Look at some of those men of that day. Paul, in his preaching of the gospel, Paul, in his missionary journeys, when we study the synoptic gospels, we find that Paul made three missionary journeys, and they were quite extensive missionary journeys, and my goodness, he was effective. I mean, he went, and he just shared the gospel. Oh, there was a price to pay. There were sacrifices that he had to make. But he went, fulfilling the mandate of the Great Commission. You remember Philip. He went to Samaria and he preached. And he shared the gospel. How do you and I describe what the gospel of the kingdom is? I've been talking about this taking the gospel, preaching the gospel, sharing the gospel. Well, we turn to the word of God in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 24 and 25. Paul describes what the gospel of the kingdom is. Oh, this is exciting. As I was preparing for this, I, I began to, to, to think about these thoughts. And I said, my, these are powerful. These are exciting. 
But here is the message of the gospel. Number one, it is victory over death. It is victory over death. The good news is that death has been defeated. Praise God. Our conqueror has been conquered in the face of the power of the kingdom of God in Christ. Death was helpless. It could not hold him. Death has been defeated and immortality has been, has brought to light. Oh, I thank God for that. An empty tomb in Jerusalem is proof of it. This is the gospel of the kingdom, victory over death. We ought to just pause for a minute and praise God for our victory over death because when we talk about death and when we go into scripture, we find that as believers that death has no sting for us. We have no fear of death. That is the message of the gospel. That is part of the message of the gospel. As a believer, we have lost our fear of death. We become like Paul when he said, to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. We have victory over death. Can I get an amen? Amen. Secondly, we have victory over Satan. This is part of the gospel message. Victory over Satan. This is the good news about the kingdom of God. Satan defeated. Satan defeated. And we may be released from demonic fear and from satanic evil and know the glorious liberty as sons and daughters of God. We are free. We are released from that demonic fear that Satan attempts to put. Satan has been defeated, praise God. We have defeated Satan. Christ has defeated Satan. And I praise him for that today. We as people of God walk in victory. Praise God. We have power. You have power. Amen. The Bible teaches us resist the devil and he what? Will flee from you. This is our privilege as people of God. This is the gospel message. You have power to tread on the enemy. You have power to tread on the serpent nature of Satan, his deceitful nature. We have the power in the name of Jesus. This is the message of the gospel. Praise God for that. And last but not least, one of the elements of this is we have victory over sin. Victory over sin. In Romans chapter six and verse six, therefore we are no longer in bondage to sin. Let me pause there. This is the word of God. Therefore we have, we are no longer in bondage to sin. We have been freed. You know, you may be a person that was in sin and you had all kinds of addictions. There were all kinds of uh, 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 of sin in your life. Like all of us, we 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 were sinners, and and we have a past, and we were in bondage to sin, but not any longer. We are free from that bond. Sin has no bondage on us are in us, we're free. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. We have been delivered, set free. Our sins have been forgiven. This is why we should be excited about sharing our story of redemption that was brought by the good news to us by Christ himself when he come into this world and he gave his life a ransom that we could have life and have it more abundantly, that we could have this freedom from sin. 
Praise God. Aren't you glad today that God has invaded this age with power? Praise God. With his power, which can and will uh, 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 set men free from their bondage to sin. He has come. He is present. He is here to set men and women free. This is our responsibility as the church of the living God to be the conveyors of this message that what God has done for others, he will do for us. When we look around and see what God has done through us, in us, through our families, through our friends, and through those that we attend church and is part and are part of our family of faith, we can see the redemptive nature of God. We can see the power of the gospel at work in those around us. This is why we can walk in victory. This is why we can share this message, which is so positive and which is so life-changing in every person's life that receives. To God be the glory great things he has done. And he will continue to do as we walk in faith. As we walk, our life becomes a manifestation of his power. Our life becomes a living, walking, breathing testimony that the mandate of the Great Commission is a reality in our lives because our, te- our testimony is this. He saves, he saves, he saves. Let me give you a personal testimony. When I was a young man, six, seven years old, I, I got sick. My mother and dad took me to the uh, doctor and the doctor uh, done test and their evaluation was that Uh, I was going to die. I had a a serious kidney disease. I had a heart condition. And uh, they told mom and dad that if I didn't get to a children's hospital to get certain things done, that I would die. And that's not a good prognosis. A mother and father doesn't want to hear that their son is going to die. I was the eldest son, and uh, uh, they prayed. And I'll never forget, my mother said to my dad, who was a pastor, said, I want us to go by an evangelist home, a tremendous man of God. They were uh, people of faith, And I'll never forget them taking me into their home, a very modest home, and they evangelized, traveled the country. And uh, this brother sat me on his knee and he and his wife and my mother and father began to pray for me. And as they prayed for me, God healed me. He healed me of the diseases that I was afflicted with. And my mother and father had so much faith. They received the prayer of the men and women of God in faith. And they never took me to the hospital. They said, we don't have to go the reality of their faith was that I was healed. The doctor affirmed that, that I was healed from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. I had no kidney disease. I had no heart problem. And after all of these years, 65 years, I'm still healed. That is part of the message of the gospel. Jesus came for our healing. 
And you might be in a situation today to where that you say, I'm sick. There's something terribly wrong in my body, in my life. But we must understand that the message of the gospel has been given to us, not only for our salvation, but for our healing. And this is the church's responsibility to share with the world that this is our biblical mandate. This is our message that God is with us, that Christ is our healer, and that he will heal us now. In closing today, I'm going to pray for your healing as you are in need of a healing now. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the healing power of your son, Jesus. And in this message today, as we shared the mandate of the Great Commission and the message of the gospel, we are healed. I pray now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit that every disease die and there be healing in every life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We're still here. Christ is still at the right hand of the Father. He's making intercession for you and I, but he's not returned, so our work is not finished. God engaged and partnered with those that they could send, and they sent people. And the Great Commission was their mission and is their mission till this very day, and it is ours. And God's work is continuing. The harvest is being reaped. The darkest places on the face of this earth is being penetrated by the gospel message today. The light is piercing the darkness. Glory be to God. As you join with us, and as you hear these challenges from this program, your life will never be the same. Your local church will never be the same. Your community will never be the same. Your family will never be the same. Why? Because you understand the mandate of the Gospel Commission.